Hey everybody, thank you for joining us for today's episode of Real Estate Disruptors. Today we have coming back Cody Hofein and Brandon Bateman. Cody's going to talk about how to get motivated sellers to call you. Uh, he did three and a half million last year, which I don't know how he survived on that. <laughs> and Brandon actively manages 50 million a year in digital marketing, which is another crazy thing. Um, if this is your first time tuning in, I'm Steve Trang, founder of the Offer Fast Homes app, the only MLS for off-market wholesale properties. And I'm on a mission to create 100 millionaires. One question I get all the time is how do I become one of the 100 millionaires? The information on this podcast alone is enough for you to get there in the next five to seven years. All you need to do is take consistent action and you will become one. When you hear a nugget, please type it in the comment section. And after the show, identify your single biggest takeaway and focus on just that for the next seven days. If you get value today out of the show, please tag a friend, share this episode. That way we can all grow together. And this is a live show, so please ask your questions for Cody and Brandon to answer. You guys ready? Let's roll. Ready. All right. So we were talking before about what got you into real estate, but how are you staying so excited in real estate and continuing to grow? Uh, what excites me? Well, let me tell you what wouldn't excite me. Maybe this will be the answer. <laughs> what wouldn't excite me is if I was wearing all the hats and if mm. I had to do everything. So to be completely honest, what excites me is I went through that learning curve. I went through that, that hard learning curve of scaling, just mm -hmm. surround yourself with the right team. And we tried it and we failed multiple times. This is not an easy journey. This is things that it's like, it's not. you hire someone and you're like, man, this resume said he did this, this, this. And on day three, I'm like, this guy isn't even close to what this resume is. <laughs> like, not even close. Wait, people lie on their resumes? <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. And so um, one of our methods on that is now it's all referral based mm -hmm. or we actually know them. And, and some of them are even family. Yeah. Because um, you just know them. You know the ins and outs. You don't get this beefed up resume. And then they come day three and you're like, I already have to fire this guy. I don't even want him on the team. Right. So we've gone through the bad, believe me. But we've learned every long along the way, learned everything, but we didn't give up. I think that's the secret, right? Is we're all gonna make mistake. We're always gonna find ways that um, you're you're gonna either win or learn. You but you can't give up. You can't let that set you back. But most people when they get to that scale mode, they try it once, they're like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm not meant to scale, I'm not meant to get there. Well, guys, here's the question I had to ask myself, and to be honest, if if I keep wearing all the hats. What does that look like three mm. years from now? What does that look like five years from now? And that picture was a lot scarier to me than trying to figure out how to hire a good team. Well, there's two things that I think are interesting here, right? Because we always see social media, you know, you always see the 5%, yeah. right, of the best. So you see social media and you see these guys that are crushing it and they're cashing checks and this and that. And so some of the people that are listening are thinking like, well, this should be easy and they're frustrated because they're running the challenges. So what advice do you give someone that's like, going after it, going hard, doing everything they're hearing, they're watching a YouTube, listening to podcasts, they're doing it, and they're not getting traction. Like, what do you tell that guy? So some, not even getting to scale, just someone that's just taking action, but they're not getting deals. Yeah. So they're just in the grind, and they don't know if they can ever scale because they still haven't consistently done yeah. deals. Oh, I always look at people's process. More times than none, it's not that they're not afraid to take action. I know plenty of go-getters. I was one. Mm -hmm. I did insurance. I went out there and I pounded doors. That's just the dumbest way to spend your time. <laughs> I was willing to take action. I took harder action than anyone out there. All right. I would out-act everyone. I told myself, no one will outwork me. Mm -hmm. That doesn't equal success. And I think that's the secret is yeah. I thought, man, all you gotta do is just outwork them. Well, if you take the wrong action, it, it doesn't matter, right? So I always look at their process, break it down and say, what is it that they're doing? If they're spending nine hours a day, that's fantastic. I love that you have nine hours a day to do it, but now let's see what you're doing with those nine hours. And you may just find out it's just the process they're doing. Maybe they're sending out postcards to the wrong list, or maybe they're cold calling the wrong list, or maybe when they talk to people on the phone, they're like saying things that you're like, yeah, don't say that. You sound right. weird, man. That's why they're hanging up on you 24-7. Or you're using free skip tracing. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> so then what about, because you, you mentioned this other thing too about, you know, I wasn't meant to grow. And this is, I think this is something that's um, uh, was perilous, right? It's a little dangerous. Yeah. Where like you grow and you said, oh, having all these people work for me, this is just more stress. This sucks. And you go back to one. And then at some point they'll get brave again. They'll do it again. And the same thing happens, like this sucks and I go back to one. What advice do you have for those people? I 
that's where I question it sucked for me. Like I'm not I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. Yeah. I want your whole audience to realize there's a suck to this. Yeah. If you want to get to a point where you can be able to just work on your business three to five hours a week, you have to go through the suck. Like there was plenty of suck. Yeah. I, I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything about entrepreneurship. I think so many times we paint the picture that it was just unicorns and rainbows, and maybe that's where I think social media and this influencer space yeah. has a huge problem is because they never share the details. They never share all the bad that does come along. It's just like, oh my gosh, guys, you can do this. You can do this in 30 days or less. Like this is amazing. Well, you can't share the suckiness. Like it's hard, right? Like, oh, this person quit on me. This person stabbed me in the back. Like you don't really share those stories. Right. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. But I do. That's the thing is, yeah. it is, it is tough. I had bad hires. And a lot of the time to point back though, I have to also take accountability and realize I had hired, I, this one guy was an A player, like this would be the greatest closer, he'd be the perfect acquisition manager, we found him, we got him, we sniped him from another business, like perfect. The issue was, I wasn't a great leader. Mm -hmm. And so, he didn't last long. A players are looking for A leaders. Yeah. They're not looking to just work for someone because it's a paycheck. They want someone that has a vision, someone that sees longevity, something that's gonna go for a long term, go a long time, and that they can see themselves growing in this place, not have a cap. I'm, I'm that guy that they probably looked at and like, man, you t you sold a great game here. Yeah. Like, I'm talking about how bad it was for the resume people. Mm -hmm. I was probably that person and I'm like, oh yeah, this business is fantastic. Yeah. It's gonna be like unicorns and rainbows. And then he came and was like, dude, you're awful as a leader. Yeah, I'm and not going leave. to the promised land with you. And they don't stick. <laughs> you only, the people that stick are just a mere reflection of who you are. All so right. if you want A players, become an A leader and you will attract those A players. So how the heck does someone become an A leader? Mm. Um, you don't have to be good, but you do have to be consistent. Are you willing to do little things consistently? Darren Hardy, right? Mm -hmm. Classic, compound effect. Be willing to do the little things over and over again that no one else is willing to do, but just continue to do them consistently. Um, an easy one, I read 10 pages a day from personal development. It's not a hard task. I'm not reading a book a day. I'm not listening to a book a day, but I do make sure I get my 10 pages in every single day that's outside of real estate. Maybe it's on, personal development in, and it could be negotiation, it could be stuff that's used in real estate, but what about uh, meditation or self-reflection or um, I look at journaling. Most people are like, journaling, Cody, come on, you're a loser. I'm like, I guess I'm a loser. This journaling has like helped me like reflect on so many things that I'm like, I did this wrong and here's how I can do it better next time. Mm -hmm. Or if I wouldn't have journaled, I wouldn't get better. So there's just little tactics that I do every single day that I just have to do consistently. Uh, Kobe Bryant, I wanna say you sent me the video. There was a video I watched, and I wanna say I watched it from maybe some a share that you had. Kobe Bryant, he would go to the gym four or five times a day where mm -hmm. most NBA players would yeah. go two times a day. Right. And it'd get to the point, he says, after two years, three years, no one could now go to the gym eight times and catch up because I had consistently gone mm -hmm. to the gym four times a day for so long that you now can't catch it's up to It's mathematically impossible. impossible to catch. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. But it's not big things. It's, it's just big little things. things consistently done. Yeah, and I think that's such a great point that, you know, it's easy to say, like, what's wrong? Why are these people leaving? You know, I I can't keep good people, but I think you're right, the self-reflection, because people will look at you as a vehicle for the success, and they're looking at you as like, I'm better than that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not running this business? Yeah. Like if this idiot can run it, like I'm out of here. I'll go do this. I'll go so crush it. <laughs> so true. And we actually did produce great competition. <laughs> they did. They left like, man, we're actually going to make this one better. I'm, I'm grateful for you. Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to uh, touch on Brandon real quick. So uh, Brandon and I were in uh, CG Select together and uh, we both had to do our presentations. And I listened to Brandon and it was very refreshing the way he presented uh, because he just talked about digital marketing and it wasn't there to sell. It wasn't a pitch. He was like, here's what I do. Here's what most people get it wrong. And for me, I'm not trying to say I'm this great marketer, but I did my own pay-per-click uh, management and my biggest frustration, and I shared this with Brandon, my biggest frustration is someone's like, hey, you should sign up for my services. Like, okay. And I'll, ask, I'll start asking the questions and it's silent on the other side. <laughs> I was like, okay, I can't, I can't in good faith give you my money because I can't be better at pay-per-click marketing than you. Yeah. But Brandon was going into terms, things that were eye-opening and I wasn't familiar with. So I thought that was really impressive. So you want to talk about digital marketing and what, how you started and what got you here? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. Um, actually, 
it, it might be hard to believe, but Cody was my first client in real estate. Let's go. <laughs> so I want to go. I mean, he kind of paid, he paid the dues for everybody. So That's I, was, I was the guinea pig, bro. We're learning on his dime. This is it. This is 100% true. You guys yeah. can thank me. <laughs> yep, it, it, it's 100% true. So it was, it was about three years ago, I think. Um, I was running a marketing agency, and we're just kind of working with, with uh, different kinds of companies, not specific to an industry. Um, and I got a call from Mark, you know, Cody's business partner. And he basically says, like, we've worked with a bunch of companies in this industry, and we just can't crack the code. I think you did last. This than is what like, you're coming to. Yeah. We've yeah. tried everyone like this. Mm-hmm. This is yeah. awful. No, why can't? And if they were any good or competent, then they don't answer the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's uh, that, that, that can be true too. So, yeah. but anyways, so so Mark was was basically saying, I, mean, I think you guys did like what was it like 200 grand in revenue in 2017 right. off your right. website. So like they were doing deals, but but they spent like 100 grand getting them. You know, mm-hmm. so it was uh, the ROI was kind of low. Um, they wanted a lot more scale and that kind of stuff. Um, so anyways, I, Mark basically Let me said, add to this. We always ask the company, here's another kicker. We always ask the company, we have more money sitting here. How can we spend more money? Like we want to spend more money mm-hmm. and they never spend it. I'm like, we have more money. Like I want you to, I want to get more than 200 grand in this year. I want a million dollars in. Here's money sitting aside. I need you to spend it. And we'd go back and we're like, how much you spend? Well, we spent this. I'm like, that's the same as last month. I just said that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so listening is an important skill I wrote a book about it actually <laughs> <laughs> well when I listened because basically Mark came to me and he was, he was like you know we tried all the agencies in this industry and we really can't make this stuff work we know that there's deals to be had here mm-hmm. I mean, pe- the fact of the matter is people are going to find the companies that they sell their house to they're going to find them on social media they're going to find them on Google mm-hmm. that's just how the world works now and it's yeah. becoming even more that way so like they knew that there had to be deals there um, but they wanted to bring someone in from the outside that that perhaps had a little bit more competence on exactly how this stuff works, you know. Right. Um, so so, anyways, that was kind of the beginning. Um, we saw that first year. We we I can't remember the numbers exactly. We over doubled revenue with keeping the ad spend exactly the same. Wow. Um, so that was that was huge for us. And then the next year we were able to scale more. So I think 2020 we did 1.4 million mm-hmm. in assignments from just about 277 thousand in spend. And when I say that much in spend, I mean like that's what what Cody's paying for his carrot website. Mm-hmm. That's what Cody is paying me to manage that stuff and yeah. my team. Um, that's the spend that goes to Facebook, to Google, to call rail in order to, to call, track our calls. And like, like that's like the spend that must happen in order for everything to, to happen. So um, let's take a step back though. Mm-hmm. What got you in the digital marketing? Oh man, what got me into digital marketing? It's it's an interesting uh, interesting story. So I I don't know if I actually know this one to be no, honest. No, I don't know if I've asked you this. No, I don't think you do. So so a long time ago, and when I was 15 years old, my first job ever was at a marketing agency. Um, I was doing just kind of whatever they didn't want to do. So so I remember like one of my tasks was like you know here's a hundred species of mushrooms. I need you to find stock photos of each of these species of mushrooms <laughs> so that you know we can use it for to oh, advertise that health miserable it, it, it wasn't because i was 15 working during my high school classes it wasn't he's like it wasn't though i loved it no here's the thing i was a 15 year old working with my on my phone while in my high school english class making 20 dollars an hour okay you know so i was stoked i yeah. think that that's I think legit that was about as that's legit the, money money rules the task that's for yeah. sure I at mean, that age yeah my, my my other job was at Publix. you know mm. if if you know the southeast, you know that grocery store mm-hmm. there making eight dollars and twenty cents an hour. You know, mm, yeah, okay. And, and I had to show up, and I and I had to deal with customers, and it was just a different, completely different experience. All right. Um, so, anyways, yeah. Looking back, nothing, <laughs> nothing crazy, but but I enjoyed it. Um, I after that, I I've kind of always been interested in marketing. Did a bunch of different stuff. Um, I spent two years of my life living in Romania and Moldova, and that was when I got like even more into this because mm. I was I was. Uh, like on a, on a service mission. Um, and we used to teach English classes because people there, like that's where their opportunities are, is knowing English. Right. Um, so I decided one day, let me try to, uh, let me try to run some Facebook ads and just see like what could happen. Could we get people to our English class? Mm-hmm. Um, turns out with $250 in Moldova, you can reach almost the entire population of Moldova <laughs> with a Facebook ad. It's incredibly inexpensive. And this is 2014. Like if right. you know Facebook ads, they only existed in like 2013. At that point it was like, you know, maybe what TikTok ads are now. Like mm-hmm. it just was super premature and nobody really knew how it worked. So this is like super early stage, Eastern Europe, Facebook ads. We had 500 people come to our English course. That's a 50 cent per person that shows up <laughs> wow. in person. Um, and it was just, it was absolutely nuts. And, and we served so many people and it was, uh, so anyways, that's kind of when I got addicted to the high of driving results with digital marketing, mm-hmm. so to speak. Um, I started the company when I was a sophomore 
in college. Wow. And just Good decided to go all at it. Yeah, that's uh, we, we started working with, uh, ironically, some some interesting kinds of companies. We, we started going more the enterprise route. Um, which is where we got, of course, a lot more competent in, in knowing how to do it really well. Mm-hmm. Um, selling enterprise clients as a sophomore in college is kind of an interesting, uh, interesting gig when it comes to digital marketing. Yeah. Um, but, but anyways, we learned a lot of stuff there and kind did of. Did you have to sell them, or was it was it, was it all marketing and they just kind of like signed up on the website? Like, did you actually have to sell them? Like, did you have to pitch them to get them as a client? Like, did they register on the website and then you had to close them on the phone, or they were just like, like this is all custom marketing, right? So I was just kind of networking my way into like, yeah. the, you know, doing audits, saying you should be doing this instead of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, when I started out, I literally just said like, I don't even care if you pay me or what you pay me or what you want me to do. <laughs> I want to do marketing. So good, <laughs> and and that was it, right? Yeah. So so You're I hired. I literally I decided I was going to start this done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I decided I was going to start this company, and yeah. within 30 minutes, I'd already sent 100 emails to 100 companies, and just saying like, "Let me just do something." Um, yeah. And we got some bites, and and the uh, and then we we of course started charging money at some point, and I realized that the whole "let me do your marketing for free" business model. So is how do crazy. we get back to that beginning model with my company? <laughs> yeah. So so anyways, that's the story. Um, that's awesome. It's uh, I guess I guess the secret for me of getting into entrepreneurship was mm. low opportunity cost. Yeah. I decided to start a company instead of taking an unpaid internship. Yeah. And that you know changed everything for me because I'm such a risk averse person. I don't know if I didn't make if I didn't make the jump then. I don't know that I ever would have become an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, at that point, I still viewed it as risky. Like I don't want that life. Like I am the guy that's happy with the corporate job. Mm-hmm. Um, and in my perspective, has changed so much. I mean, after after owning the company for a little bit, and like I guess now I believe that. I'm safer working for myself than I ever could be working for someone right. else. Oh, true. Absolutely. And, and that wasn't, uh, that never registered for me as something that could potentially be true. So that's how we were programmed growing up. Exactly. Um, so along the way, because direct, what you're doing right now is direct response marketing, mm-hmm. right? And so like when I went through, I, uh, I've shared before, like I was managing my own pay-per-click back in 2011, 2012. And I still m- miss those days where it was $2 per click and $12 <laughs> a lead for buy my house, right? Like I missed those days, so I left a lot of money on the table. But along the way, you know, I had to learn direct response marketing, Perry Marshall, Dan Kennedy, all of this stuff. What did you do to learn and become excellent at direct response marketing and pay-per-click marketing? Well, that it, it's a really good question. I think it plays on my my strengths, you know, as a person. Um, I'm great with data. Like mm-hmm. I just think in numbers, um, and and that pays huge dividends when it comes to to digital marketing. Uh, a lot of people are saying like you're not getting your KPIs right, you're not tracking the right data in your business, you know, and that kind of that matters. But for every business I see that's not getting their KPIs together, I see two businesses that have their data, but they don't know how to use it to make business decisions. Right. Um, and I think that that realistically misinterpreted data is one of the biggest threats to, to most businesses. And that's exactly what happens in digital marketing. People say, well, we've, we're kind of seeing this trend and, and this is the data. And I say, okay, well, that, that sounds good. And then they say, well, and, and that means this. And I'm like, okay, yep, about right. And and then they say, so we're going to do this in our business. And it just, everything deteriorates. <laughs> right so the, the conclusions did not make no, sense. No, hardly ever. So, I mean, that's where I got, I got so deep into understanding how do we collect data, mm-hmm. right? How do we build a system that collects as much data as possible? And then once we collect that data, how do we utilize it in a way that speaks the language of the platform that we're using? Um, so that's where we've, I mean, I've gotten so deep in this, we've built our own software around PPC. Um, we've we've tested thousands of Facebook ads for, for wholesalers. At this point, I believe like in terms of understanding what actually drives deals, mm-hmm. not just leads, we have the largest database that exists yeah. in digital marketing for wholesaling across these really? channels. I, I believe so because nobody else is tracking what generates deals. Right. They're only tracking what generates leads. And by the way, this is how he closed me, right? <laughs> <He's> <laughs> like, <No. laughs> Take my money. Yeah, I mean, so I'm, I'm listening to Brandon talk about this. He's like, yeah, we know that these phrases gets yeah. leads, but we know these phrases close deals. That's right. Oh. <laughs> Makes a huge difference. Was, okay, mm-hmm. so we're, we're bidding trying to get our cost per click low. Really, what we should be doing is trying to get our cost per deal low. And mm-hmm. that was the thing that he was talking about. I was like, oh. Crap. That makes sense. Perfect yeah. example of data misinterpreted. Yeah. Um, being a problem for a business. Right. Right. Because marketers want to tell clients, we generated to do this many leads. Mm-hmm. And we don't care. When we work with clients, we don't care if we say that we generated to do that many leads. We yeah. care how many deals did you get. Yeah. Right. And that's the important thing to track <laughs> the, the, the closings. I look at just digital marketing in general. I think that has the biggest space for growth. Mm-hmm. I look at 
that was what we were most excited about. Direct mail, I mean, everyone knows me for direct mail. That's what mm-hmm. I've always preached is direct mail. It's not dead. It's still not dead. Mm-hmm. But something happened even last year that I was like, man, there, there's something special here. And so we just, Brandon just kept learning. I wish I could say I, I kept learning. I didn't. Well, and, and We just kept responding being, to the awesome learning he was yeah. doing. <laughs> well, and he's being humble too, because a lot of that growth that we've had is, is from training his team on how web leads are different mm-hmm. from the other leads that they manage. That's right. right. So, I mean, in, just in a the different lead, process. Yeah, exactly. Different process on how you manage those leads. Um, although direct or digital marketing can produce a lead, we treat those leads completely different than any other lead. So it's no different than our marketing dollars. We have a certain list and then we have a stacked list. That's like, okay, this individual's on four different lists. Who's gonna get majority of your marketing dollars? That or the high absentee or the high uh, high equity owner occupied. Right. It's like most companies though, they're spending the same money on all these lists. And it's like, guys, we gotta concentrate. Mm-hmm. So the same thing with, with our, how we respond when these leads come in. These leads are seeking you out. This isn't you trying to seek them with a postcard or a cold call or any other way that's outbound. Mm-hmm. These are people coming to you saying, hey, I need to sell my home. And too many times I caught my team writing this story that was just fake. And so this is over years of, of learning this. So yes, great digital marketing, but then this process where I'm looking at my team and I'm like, well, I just already called them and I've called them four times in the last 20 minutes and they're not responding. This must be a fake lead. This must be one of our competitors just baiting us over here. And we write this story and we start to almost find justification and and rightfully so, most people fall into this and I see this all the time nationwide where they're like, oh man, I called them five times. I mean, they're probably not as motivated they wrote in this web form. Well, real story that took place, we have three acquisition managers in Utah we had a web form come in that was just like, you wish you could get this on a phone call in five seconds. I mean, everything that you needed to know was like a number 10 on my on my hot list, like yeah. get out there now. And they call them, one acquisition call, voicemail, text. Next acquisition call, voicemail, text. Call, voicemail, text. Three people in 10 minutes. From the time the web form came in, 10 minutes. Now we could all write this story and say, Oh man, they're not motivated. She wasn't oh, man. That serious. You always have, or how many times do you say, man, your phone's on your hip. Look how fast I pulled my phone up. It's like the phone's on their hip. You don't just leave your phone sitting around. Like right. she knows we're calling her. She knows we're texting her. Well, the reality was my youngest acquisition manager, the newest one says, I think I'm just going to go out there. So he, I'm like, what a brilliant idea. Let's yeah. do it. So he goes out there and she is already loading boxes into a U-Haul. And yes, her phone is upstairs. Mm -hmm. Goes in, talks to her, two hours later comes out with a contract. Still to this day, our largest assignment, $124,000, where most people would write that off saying, well, we've tried three phone calls, three voicemails, three texts in the last 10 minutes. It must not be motivated. We treat these leads with a higher urgency and more respect than that. We just go unannounced and we get contracts all the time unannounced. It reminds me of Homer Simpson, right? Like, I'm just one man. I did everything I could do. <laughs> That's the story you hear. I mean, yeah. you, if, if you're not care, I, I can still hear it in my team. My team knows this process, and there's still times where we have to catch each other saying, uh, is that real, or mm-hmm. did you just write that story? And they're like, you're right, I wrote that story. We have to always remind ourselves, always be aware of, we write these stories all the time, but it's to justify that, I don't need to follow up with this one. They're not that motivated. Yeah. And we write this story out. And we've updated our process. Yeah, yeah. baby. Right. Now, PPC, we can't get a hold of them. Get your right butt over out there. there. That's yeah. 100%. That's one of the That's probably the best gold nugget, guys, that I can tell you. If it comes from pay per click, these are hot leads seeking you out. Get your butt out there and go unannounced and you'll find out that you'll still do deals. So, 3.5 million last year. Yep. What was your number one lead source? Number one lead source, um, we did, was it one four, one two? What was it in digital marketing? Yeah, one four off digital. So that was our, well, then we have direct mail that still did over a million. Um, Cold calling did, it still does great too. Those are our three highest. Mm -hmm. Um, People call driving for dollars. Driving for dollars is not a marketing channel. It's just a channel to get a list. It's Mm -hmm. no different than list source. And so I don't call driving for dollars a marketing channel as much as, a way to get a list that then we can market to either through texting, cold calling, or or direct mail, or PPC, right? or I guess 
all Facebook and <laughs> SEO. Um, but yeah, I'd say our most, when it comes to our highest return for at least amount of money out, digital marketing. All right. And that's the three pieces. So let's talk about digital marketing because we've been talking just about, just about pay-per-click. Yep. But Brandon's kind of opened my eyes a little bit and he tells me that I'm being, what was it? it wasn't willfully ignorant, but it was like, you're completely disregarding Facebook and you're making a mistake doing this. Mm -hmm. So can you, you got your platform here. That's the other <laughs> thing that he's good at. He's kind. He didn't tell you what he really wanted to tell you. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, I, I don't think you're looking uh, at this you're completely. You're not looking at this right. <laughs> you really should add it. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about that. Yeah, let's talk about because I don't think everybody you know listening is probably even familiar with PPC. So are you cool with it if we if we just kind of go over the three of them and, and yeah, yeah, that's great and how they work. Um, so so PPC is the one that we talked about the most. Mm -hmm. That is people who are actively searching on Google, and the magic of that is you can just pay to be at the top of Google, mm -hmm. and you're guaranteed that you're just going to be there. Right. Right. It's you're not guaranteed it'll be a certain price. You know you can bid according to what you want to pay. Um, but but anyways, you get you get those clicks out of Google, and those ones like our, our best clients are closing one in ten to fifteen PPC leads. So those are pretty much like the best leads that you can get in your business. I don't know of any channel that produces at that kind of close rate. Yeah. The downside of PPC is it's expensive. Um, and no no barrier to entry. Yep. No barrier to entry. You're going Very to true. Uh, yeah. you're going to probably be one of several companies in touch with the seller. Yeah. Um, you could, of course, be the only one, but basically if someone searches for a wholesaler on Google, they will have no problem finding 100 <laughs> pages of wholesalers on Google, yeah. right? So your competition's also in touch with them, and that's where PP Cody's team kills it with PPC. It's because they're, they treat those leads with real urgency. Mm -hmm. They understand that when they get a PPC lead, it's going to be a deal. The question is, are they gonna be the one who gets the deal, or is someone else gonna to get to the seller before they do? Mm -hmm. Um, so anyways, PPC is an excellent channel. There's a lot of scalability in it. If you want to spend a lot of money on PPC, you can. And that's yeah. why a lot of Cody's results come from PPC is because we're running at scale, right? We spent yeah. $275,000 last year. Um, you can't spend that on Facebook, but you can yeah. on PPC. So it's uh, like a lot of our bigger clients really love PPC because it produces volume. And, and like, correct me if I'm wrong here, Cody, but like if I was scaling a business, you talked about all these problems with hiring people on these channels. I mean, scaling direct mail, scaling cold calling, and texting, and all that stuff that requires tons of lead management and driving yeah. for dollars, that is a whole different game than scaling your PPC. Scaling a business on hot leads is so much Which brings different. up a good point though. How many times, I mean, you're a business owner, I'm a business owner, I always used to think this, I'm like, ah, we're just figuring it out ourselves. We'll mm -hmm. go hire a cold call. Cold calling is probably our least profitable, but it's also our least scalable. It's the one that like puts a pit in my stomach when I'm like, Oh man, that person was pretty good and they're walking like, yeah. cause it's not, it's a big turnover and mm -hmm. it's still a good channel. So I'm not here to poo poo on the party of a cold calling. It's a great channel. It's still profitable, but it's the one that gives me the most heartburn too. Cause it has the most turning parts. Well, it's labor intensive. You got to manage like it you is. Can't, you can yell at Google, but when you're yelling at Google, it's because you did something wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But you got people and we're, you know, how do I put this? We're inconsistent. We, yeah. Perfect world, you know, we're automatons at work, right? Perfect world, but we're not. I mean, you could have an argument with your wife before you got here, right? Yep. Got cut off in traffic, whatever. Your yep. mood is just not right. And it affects the entire business. It does. Right? And if you had one person in the bad mood in a room with three other people, does the person with the bad mood dominate or do other three people get them out of the bad mood? Negativity <laughs> always wins. So, always. Yeah. That's some other challenges of managing people. Yeah. Yep. And this is such a scalable channel, but I never, as an entrepreneur, I guess sometimes I get nervous. I'm like, man, but there's, there's this ad spend and then there's management fee. But now you look at it as like, oh, wait a second. This really is actually less than hiring someone mm. to be in my office doing this marketing channel and I don't have to manage it. All I got to do is just respond to it. That's it. Well, the other thing too is I can sleep perfectly fine at night knowing that Google doesn't need my money, right? Like <laughs> if things are really going bad, yeah, right? Or like COVID strikes, yeah, right? Yeah. And he's like, okay, let's just pause Google for a month. That's right. You you, you sleep totally fine. That's right. Google, Sergey, whoever all those other people over there, they're going to be fine. <laughs> you can't just pause payroll. You can't. <laughs> That's can. going to cause problems. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't want to say that I don't want people to have, because again, it's the mix of all of this. If I had to rest my laurels all on on digital marketing, yeah, I wouldn't have done 3.5 million last right. year. It just wouldn't have happened. It was a so fraction it's the, of it. Yeah, it's, it's the joint efforts of all of them. And so I, I, I'm not here to say don't hire a team. Yes, a good team, I mean, 
John Maxwell, he says, don't show me your dreams, show me your team. Mm -hmm. Like that's how we accomplish our dream is we gotta have that dream team, Absolutely. we have to have that team in place. But man, it's so nice when you have just leads coming in that you can just respond to it's right. really nice yeah absolutely i mean so that's where like a lot of my bigger clients love ppc because of that scalability it's easier to scale a company on that kind of stuff um but however facebook which this is kind of why i told you in 2020 was our highest roi channel across all of our clients right facebook is a facebook is an awesome channel and, and the reason it's great is it's still inbound mm -hmm. people are reaching out to you um, but your ad doesn't show next to other people's ads you're reaching them kind of individually. Um, so while there's a little bit less motivation than PPC, you're much more likely to be the only person in touch. Mm -hmm. So the average assignment on Facebook across clients has been higher in 2020 than it has on PPC. And that's, that was a statistic that surprised me a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, which is which is interesting because like PPC has those, those different forces, right? Mm -hmm. They're really motivated, but also competition mm -hmm. drives down assignments, right? right? So, so that's where Facebook is a great channel. Um, a lot of my smaller clients love Facebook because it gets you a cheaper cost per lead it gives you that stronger lead flow um, and it gives you a better ROI typically than PPC does. The disadvantage is you cannot spend nearly as much money on Facebook. So Facebook is, if you're looking for low hanging fruit, I think Facebook- The Zuck has a cap? <laughs> the Mr. Zuckerberg has a cap on well, how much money you can gonna, spend with this guy? Well, well let, me, let me clarify that. I'm talking about diminishing marginal returns. All right. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> yeah, Zuck's going to take as much money as you're willing to give him. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the fact of the matter is, Facebook's so cheap, you'll just reach everybody that exists in your market. And <laughs> after you do that, you'll do it again. And after you do that, you know, maybe the third time, it doesn't do as much as it did the first time. Right. Gotcha. And you just run into this diminishing return where people kind of get fatigued from your mm -hmm. ads and it doesn't do as much. Um, whereas PPC, it's limited by the number of people searching, but there tends to be more money that you could spend there than on Facebook. So it's a, Facebook is an excellent channel. Oftentimes, if people are looking to just get started um, and have a lower budget, Facebook is is the best channel out of the digital ones. Whereas PPC, they'd look at it like, oh, I only got like four leads this month. You know, it's kind of slow. It could be really good and those leads close at an amazing rate, but it doesn't feel like as much is happening right. as it does on Facebook. So anyways, great, both great channels. They kind of have their own their own things. I think the interactions between them are probably the best thing. Um, when you're, for example, marketing through through Google pay-per-click and then you're retargeting with Facebook. Got so it. when someone visits your website, you're continually showing them seller testimonial videos and, mm -hmm. and different things like that that help not only for you to get the lead, but also once you get it, for when you call them, them to be excited to talk to you, right. not skeptical of this company that they submitted their information to online. Um, so there's definitely some, some intricacies there and we also find that a lot of people are afraid of clicking on Facebook ads. So instead, they'll search your website on Google, mm. and you got to be found there too. Um, so there's, there's, we, we find that we have a lot of leads that kind of have interactions on both of those platforms. Interesting. Here's the perfect story. We asked a client of ours that it came from Facebook on our side. It shows it comes from Facebook. But when you track it down, they were at work, and they were typing it in on their phone. So it wouldn't be this, but it'd be this. <laughs> They'd be typing in their phone. They click on our ad, our pay-per-click ad, and then the boss come, this is the true story. My boss came by, so I closed down. And so I shut it down. And then I was at home talking to my spouse. I was like, man, there's this company is like sell Utah or something like that. Well, meanwhile, retargeting on Facebook, all of a sudden they're in Facebook like, hey, that's the company right there. And they click on it. Facebook got the credit, but that's the beauty of them working together where would they have found us again? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Or would they said, was it this company I sent it to or is it this company I sent it to that form? And I they can never remember. One. That's right. This is 100%. Because, I mean, you got a few seconds and most of them are busy at work and they're trying to do it as quick as they can. But then boss comes by and they shut down and go back to work, right? Yeah. That's why that retargeting, why the two of them, I didn't know what I didn't know either. I was like, nah, just pay per click. Yeah. And then you realize, no, it's the power of both because how many people are scrolling through Facebook and that retargeting is now pennies on the dollar. Mm hmm. I mean, am I saying that right? Yeah, I mean, retargeting is such low hanging fruit. Um, like, it's we spend less than a dollar a day for mm. the majority of our clients on retargeting, wow. and we still reach everybody who goes to their website. Wow! So it's just incredibly inexpensive. Of course, you, I don't know if you can hire an agency to spend thirty dollars a month for you on <laughs> Facebook ads. Like, you got to do something else too. But it's like a no brainer to spend that money on retargeting. Wow! Uh, so one thing I always heard. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? If someone's finding you on Facebook, generally, isn't it a longer cycle time mm -hmm. from when they register to it closes? 
Yeah, absolutely. That's where we see that PPC tends to be the quickest time in between a lead and a contract. Mm -hmm. Facebook, it's a little bit longer. So like you got an immediate dopamine hit with pay-per-click. 100%. Facebook is a slow... Yeah, it's slower. It's not like cold calling Mm -hmm. or texting. Like It's going to be shorter than those windows. And we still find that everything blended together on digital tends to be a quicker uh, payoff than, Mm -hmm. than any other channel. Um, but yeah, Facebook's going to be those longer ones and and PPC is definitely going to be those quicker ones because on PPC, like if you get to the point where you're distressed enough that you're searching on Google for someone to buy your house, you're ready to move pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas on Facebook, you're reaching people early. Like maybe it's not time right now, but they're thinking, oh, you know, with with that thing that's happening next week, I might actually have to start trying to look at options to sell my house. So with Facebook, follow-up is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, and and we find that you get a lot of deals there. What did you say? Like something like 75% of your deals are coming on follow-up. Yeah, and it varies. 70, 75% of all of our deals come from follow-up. So I yeah. always like that metric. If we find out that 50% or 60% came on on the spot closes, we missed out on a huge like portion of the market. It, it really should be skewed where 75% of your deals is coming from. And that's an easy metric to tell anyone watching see where your deals are coming from, track that. Mm -hmm. And if you're like, oh, 80% of my deals come from on the spot closes, I hate to tell you, you're missing out on 75% more of the market out there. Like you're missing out on a ton of deals. Yeah, exactly. And then there's a third way. Mm -hmm. Exactly, it's called SEO, stands for search engine optimization. This is my favorite. Is it? Cody loves it. When it comes to ROI, this is my favorite. But it is a later game, not a now game. And he'll explain that. Yeah, so so if PPC, here's probably the best comparison. If PPC is, renting a house seo is owning a house Mm -hmm. seo is basically the game of using google for what it's actually used for when someone searches something yeah google's going to show paid ads but also it's going to show organic listings that are the most relevant thing for that Um, now how do you when you're one of a hundred wholesalers with websites in your market prove to google that you're more relevant to what the person's searching than one of these other companies Um, it's by by doing search engine optimization Um, things like posting content on your website, getting backlinks, optimizing pages on your website for particular keywords, and different things like that are kind of how you prove to Google that you belong there. Um, The thing about SEO is it does take a lot of time. If you start SEO today, you will not get, I mean, most of our clients, it's nine to 12 months until their first deal from SEO. Wow. Um, It's one of those things where it's relatively inexpensive each month, like you won't pay as much for SEO as you do for other stuff, because there's no spend, there's Mm -hmm. management only. Um, And you'll find that you're getting the same quality of leads that you get from PPC, but you're not paying for those clicks anymore. Is it the same quality? Um, Yeah, I mean, technically it's a little bit lower quality because we have, like, if we get some, for example, some terms that people are searching on Google that aren't uh, exactly what we want, but we're ranking for them organically so we don't have to pay anything extra to Mm -hmm. show up there, like, yeah, we'll take those, right? So sometimes the leads aren't as high quality, but they're they're really, really close, and it includes also those core things. There's different SEO strategies you could do to do the core stuff or, Yeah, well, I'm just curious, because like, for me, it always made sense that they'd be more motivated, right? Like, that's what made sense to me logically. Mm -hmm. But we've bought some SEO leads, right? Bought, you know, other people ranked on SEO, and then they sell those leads. Yeah. And we use those leads, we're like- That's actually a brilliant model. Yeah, and I was looking, I was like, these leads are not very good. So and I was just curious, like maybe something else was going on. Yeah, I mean, that's a matter of what is the SEO. I mean, any mm-hmm. company that's selling leads, you generally can't count on the quality of the leads being right. the same as if you were to generate them because they're making money on each. Their model is how many leads they can get in. Yeah, so it's a, I think incentives are kind of misaligned. And Slightly that, skewed. Yeah, it's, it's not that they couldn't uh, do it right, but like if you're looking at what's gonna make them most profitable, mm-hmm it's rarely going to be having expensive leads and telling people, but trust me, they're really good. It's just going to be providing more leads. That's generally what's best. Right. And so, and I'll ask you the question here that I asked you uh, when we talked before was I've got a couple of guys in my market. They're pretty big. You might've heard of them. Open door, offer pad, <laughs> Zillow. <laughs> yeah. How do I compete against these guys? Because they have a little bit more money than I do. Yeah. And a lot of people think of SEO, like I want to be number one. And then I ask them like, well, what, what do you mean, number mm-hmm. one? They're like, I want to rank number one. And I say, well, well for what? Because we identified about 5,000 things that people could be searching to find a wholesaler. And you know, if someone searches right here where we are, or they search five miles away, they're going to get different results on Google. Right. Google's a, a crazy machine. Mm-hmm. So, so anyways, there's a, there's a lot of granularity to it. If you can't compete with the big guys and be right house. at the core of Phoenix, Phoenix yeah. on buy my house, <laughs> I mean, there's there's more long tail stuff, right? Yeah. There's there's things that are less less common that you can be more optimized for. 
Um, and then, of course, there's different locations and everything. So really for SEO, there's, there's always something to, to be had there. Um, there's so much opportunity. Um, but it is worth saying that it can't scale quite as much as PPC with one website because Google only considers one website relevant for so many things. Mm -hmm. Whereas PPC, I mean, you could bid on, like, like we've had a client that has 10 million keywords on PPC. This is outside of wholesaling. I was going to uh, say, I've, I've done my campaigns. It's not 10 million words. Yeah, but they, they literally have 10 million keywords. Like, you, if you're willing to pay for it, Google's willing to let you pay for it. Of course, they're uh, really good at that. Yeah, they're, they're really good at taking it. Yeah. Um, so anyways, that's where, like, PPC, you can scale it to. Yeah. As, as long as there's people searching, you can have it there. But basically, the advantage of SEO is once you start ranking, it tends to be the highest ROI channel over time. Um, like, Cody spent about $12,000 maintaining his SEO last year mm -hmm. and did about $300,000 in revenue from that. A little over 300000 mm -hmm. So That, my friends, who wouldn't want to spend twelve grand at a slot machine, mm -hmm. put in twelve grand, pull it down, it spits out three hundred and twenty. dollars uh -huh. That's, That's what it was. That works. It was. But it really is a long game. It right? is. That's so, scary as an entrepreneur before you go on to this. That's scary as an entrepreneur because someone's like, you're going to just be paying me, but... It's like planting a tree. It's like, I want shade right now. It's like, great, you should have planted a tree 15 years ago. Yeah. This is the same play. It's, you want leads from SEO? That's fantastic. Well, you should have started 12 months ago. And that's the reality. And so many people are like, well, then I'll just keep investing more money over here. And then they never start this. The problem is you have to start this. Like get that 12 months going because that ROI is so great. That's why I love it. It's not like that was my biggest money in channel. It's just, 12,000 out for a little over 300,000 in. It's works. just, you look at that and you're like, holy cow. But one of the other things that I think is crucial that we're really, really good at is find, every time you do a deal, we have a process set up to get a testimonial on Google. So a written testimonial on Google. And then, in fact, people can go look at it. Utah, just type in Utah Sell Now, not the WW, and definitely not the pay per click. Um, but <laughs> yeah, click you'll see, ass, you'll see on the right side. You'll see on the right side. You'll see, uh, I think it's like 105 or 106 Google reviews. And then, more importantly, um, on our website, who owns YouTube? Google. Mm -hmm. And so, what are they going to promote? Their company. So always get video testimonials and at the bottom of the testimonial, always transcribe it. And now you just did search engine optimization. So when people are clicking in keywords and we're very, very specific on if I'm getting a review from you, Steve, I'm like, Steve, how was a cash offer for you? And I have you repeat it. Well, a cash offer was awesome because it allowed me to do this, 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 this. Sounds a little manipulative. But that's the that's <laughs> what people are looking for. I people know. are like, that's cash what you offer have to for do. my house. And so it's like, Every question has its purpose. Mm -hmm. How was selling your home fast in Provo, like even say in a city, so that if someone is in the nearing cities of Provo, Google's like, well, here's a company that's relevant mm -hmm. because this guy just sold a home for fast and for cash in Provo, and this guy's right outside of Provo in Orem. So there's, there's key things there that I yeah. think are, a lot of people aren't doing. If you go to our website, you'll see we have a lot of videos, but we also have a lot of Google reviews, and it's not like you can just pound them and say, hey, I want 20 of my friends to go and put reviews on there. Google doesn't look that as relevant. They're like, that's great. You did 20 in a day. They want to see longevity. They want to see consistent post every single week consistently for years. And then they're going to be like, this guy's relevant. This guy's serving a lot of people and people are willing to post about their review on it. Mm -hmm. So I think we should hit on real quick the process. How do we get all those Google reviews? Like what is the conversation? When are you asking a seller and what's that conversation like? So we used to have our, our title company do it. So when they're in closing, like, hey, before you go, and we'd have like a mug and all this fun stuff that we'd give them as a gift. And hey, before you go, how was your experience? <laughs> now what we do is our acquisition managers just do it. And what we do is instead of asking for a testimonial, that's like, that's like a way that's like, uh, like let's get better in this. Like <laughs> it's almost sounding like you owe me. Mm -hmm. They don't owe us anything. They just sold us their house at a discount. Mm -hmm. They don't owe me a testimonial. But when we ask for a testimonial, it's almost like, hey, you owe me a testimonial. They don't owe us anything. So what we do is we involve them in our mission. Our mission is to serve people and help them. Like we want to make sure that we get them to plan B and serve them with high quality. How do we enroll those people into that mission? And so now what we do is we just ask them, hey, your story, it's not as unique as you think, but you may find out that your story could really help someone out there that doesn't think they have an option on selling their home, that they think they're stuck with this. And it might be your story that lets them know that there's hope, mm -hmm. that 
could inspire them and motivate them to let them know there's other options out there. Do you mind sharing your story so we can see that? And people are like, they want to be, everyone wants to help someone. Right. If you ask someone like, what's the biggest thing you'd want to do? They're like, oh, if I could just serve people or help people, everyone wants to help people. So enroll them on that. How do I get a story from you so you can inspire these people? Do you mind sharing your story so we can help these individuals that might be out there thinking, I don't have a chance. I don't yeah. know if anyone will buy my home. You may find out your story just might give them hope to find out there's options. They're like, heck yes, I will. And then they do it. I love so it. So that's what we do. So we're not going to mention any names here. Okay. Uh, we were speaking offline. <laughs> and there are individuals out there that promote locking contracts up at the seller's price and price dropping them. You feel that short sighted. And I kind of go, I think that lines up with what we were just legal. talking about. <laughs> Definitely not legal. That's another conversation. But as far as uh, the short sightedness, you, you want to talk about, like, well, I guess we just expand upon that, you know, the problem with that business model. The problem now, if you're going to go back to digital marketing, what person is going to give you a review if your goal is, well, gosh, I'm in a market where I have Steve Trang and Pace and and Jamil and Brent, and I'm in this market that's just crazy competitive. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna lock it up at full price, and then I'm gonna go back and renegotiate it because I'm gonna get an inspection and mm -hmm. say, because of this, I have to actually pay this. Mm -hmm. Like, come on, there is no intent of ever paying that price. And on top of that, majority of them are gonna cancel. Mm -hmm. But how many people, when you go back and say, I'm gonna give you 180, and then you go back and say, ah, I can only give you 120. How many people can you enroll to say, hey, would you give me an amazing story that would inspire people? Like, no, dirtbag, you cut me out 60 grand. Like, right. I was hoping for 180 and you didn't do it. You did 120. I can't imagine that business growing. So now on the SEO side, at least for, I mean, I don't know how it values. I, that's a great question for you. I put a lot of stock and weight and we use that as an authority play when we're talking to people, hey guys, we have more written reviews, more video testimonials than any other company in the whole state of Utah. In fact, on my way over there, I'll send you a couple that you can already start watching. Mm -hmm. So we use these all the time and we send them over and we and that's our touch, right? It's mm -hmm. five to 12 touches. So we're using that. Well, if you're shortchanging people, you have nothing to say in the authority, but I'll guarantee you also those ones that contract that you canceled, I'll guarantee you those people will be like dirt bags, right. crooks, never do business with these scumbags again. And guess what? Google's going to sniff that out and be like, nope, we're not referring you. We're not putting you anywhere out here for people to see. Like you, your SEO, you're going to be on the 20th page. Well, not just that. Like this is something I, I taught a while ago is that every lead is an internet lead. You might not think it's not an internet lead, but every lead is an internet lead. Because even if you came by referral, yeah, I'm still just like, who's this, who's this Cody Hoffine guy? Yeah, Let me look him up. Oh, he does all these things. Hey, Cody, don't even bother coming over. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. it impacts you, right? That's right. The ones that you price drop are going to give you some nasty reviews. Uh, the ones that say F off are going to give you nasty reviews. No one's loving you. That's right. Right? That's so it's really true. short sighted. And then the whole other thing where it's completely legal. That's a whole other story. <laughs> if you want to last in the game, if you don't want to last in the game, do that model. Yeah. <laughs> So let's see, uh, guys, please ask your questions uh, here uh, uh, for, for Brandon and Cody to answer. Uh, is there anything else you wanna add on the digital marketing side? Well, I just say with SEO, like the way I would think about it is like if you're at a point in your business where you're taking home money beyond what you need just to pay for your, uh, you know, for your family's livelihood, like if you're buying rentals or you're investing in the stock market or something like that, SEO is going to get you a better return than that. Mm. It's worth investing in. The problem is people put it next to the short-term stuff. And they say, well, it's not going to work. But then they go buy a rental. And I'm like, well, that's not returning your money day one either. You know, like that, that's going to be a long game to get your money back there. SEO returns dividends far. So you're saying don't stuff. compare SEO to your pay-per-click results. That's right. Compare it to like your stocks and your mm -hmm. rental portfolio. Because it's a long-term investment. investment yeah. Just like those things are. Um, if you decide today, I want to stop paying Google, I want to stop paying Facebook, they're not going to give you any more leads. No. <laughs> if you have worked on SEO and you built it up, that's a machine that generates leads and mm -hmm. now you'll get leads, even if you decide to stop maintaining that machine today. And slowly right. it tapers off, but the maintenance can be cheaper than getting it there also. So it's a, so anyways, it's an asset mm -hmm. and that's how you have to view it. It has actual tangible value. Um, whereas pay-per-click Facebook ads, you bring the leads in and then they're gone. And, and it's, you know, very great ways to scale a business, 
Um, but I find that most wholesalers are a little bit too short-sighted yeah. to really invest They want the fast money. Mm-hmm. And actually, this goes back just in line with our conversation we just had now. Like, I'm investing a lot on my personal brand. And we were talking about, like, we're talking about doubling our size of our space and investing in our personal brand. That's SEO, right? That's right. Building <laughs> our Instagram profile, our TikTok, our Facebook. That's just different SEO. It's just a, we're just ranking on Instagram versus ranking on Google. Yeah. All right. So search engine optimization, that's definitely the way to go. Uh, so... Yeah, not a lot of questions here. I mean, I think there's just a lot of people that have gone through it and weren't really in love with it. So what would you say to someone that's gone through Facebook and they have not had the results that they wanted? I had those experiences. I think you've had those experiences. I have definitely had those experiences. I, have, I, I did not care for those experiences. No, I, I, I seriously, I had a, a, co- I have a, I had a huge coaching platform mm-hmm. that we were single-handedly building this guy's business. Like, built it big just off our our clientele off our customers and it ended up turning into a bad sour deal mm-hmm. where he was telling us he was reviewing our accounts every week and then we had someone look at it and it's like this guy hasn't touched your account in six months and we're like hey you said you view it every week oh yeah i do it every week and it's like lying to me right there on the phone and then putting other clients in front of me to where it was it was i was always like one or two spot and then I was never found on these searches and then I'm like man how are th- these guys must be paying more well then I find out they're being managed by the same person and I'm no longer ranking on PPC and I'm like wait what <laughs> and the guy denied it he's like oh no I don't manage their accounts I'm like it says it they're right here <laughs> like I know who's managing it yeah. so that's what I think when people are having those experiences I had ever bit a right to be like I'm done with this business because I felt like that industry was one of those industries that I'm like, I don't know. I mean, he's talking. It's You might as well speak German. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know half of the stuff he's even talking about. I'm like, fantastic. I don't know. But when you don't know, you also don't know what to monitor, what to judge, what to expect because you just don't know. Mm-hmm. And I'm grateful I found Brandon. But I, I thought, oh, yeah, this is what it is and this is the return and that's what it's supposed to be doing. I mean, he told us it was a great lead. And then when you find someone that actually knows what they're doing, you're like, ah, this is what it's supposed to be like. So right. that's for those out there. Don't stop. Don't let it make you lose or give up. Let it teach you to learn and just maybe ask better questions. And really, really, the big thing I like to see is hands on. How hands on are they with the account? Mm-hmm. If it's touching it once every six months, see I can do that. It. Yeah. Um, so Alexis wants to know. Alexis Adams is PPC, is PPC and SEO the only marketing that you guys are doing? No. So we do. We do uh, all web marketing. So we do uh, PPC, Facebook, SEO, and then we do direct mail. We do cold calling. And then our texting isn't like batch, like texting. We don't we don't send out like blast a bunch of texting. It's just simultaneous with the people that we're cold calling. They're simultaneously through just a sideline app mm-hmm. that we're just sending a text. If, if it goes to voicemail, we're like, hey, we just left you a message, blah, 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 blah. And it's literally a copy, copy paste, and then click. Yeah. Um, but that's really all we're doing for our marketing. So it's the it's squeezing the juice with multiple. So um, let me ask you, with your direct mail, is there anyone you're targeting specifically for direct mail? Direct mail, yes. Um, are, are like go-tos every day, and this is direct mail and cold calling at the same time, is PEND. So think of P-E-N-D, it's probate, eviction, notice of default, divorce. We love that list because it's a daily list where most lists you're buying like tax delinquent, you're not gonna pull that more than once a year. Yeah. And so you're gonna keep that list, but so is 50, 100, 200, whatever market you're in, mm-hmm. other people are hitting that list nonstop where that penned list, probate, eviction, notice of, e- notice of default, and divorce, those are daily lists. And I can promise you no one's getting them quicker than us. Yeah. And so we're on those all the time. But those are fantastic lists. Anything that you can pull daily, fantastic list to target and cold call at the same time. How's your conversation on those divorce lists? Divorce list, we don't bring up the spade and be like, <laughs> hey, it looks like you're in a salty relationship. I'm like, no, we don't do any of that as much as Direct mail is going to do its thing. They're going to respond if they're going to respond. But if it's cold call, it's just simple. It's just a simple script that I think everyone knows out there. Brent's been in here a bunch of times sharing it, and it it works. It's just an easy thing where it's, hey, I know this is random and (laughs) out of the blue, but do you own the home? Are you the owner of the home at 123 Main Street? It's not. I I was just at the divorce court, and I noticed. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I noticed. (laughs) 
you're in the fritz <laughs> listen i'm here to help you uh so property grabs uh do you think doing a video ad with a real human will convert better on facebook than just a generic ad Ooh, that's your question yeah it's a good question so so i'll uh, i'll say what i think it's asking um a generic ad would be maybe a picture of a home or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then a ad with a real human would be like a seller testimonial or perhaps a video of you talking about what you do and, and stuff like that. Um, we use both. We find that the, I don't know if, if I call them generic ads, but like, for example, an ad featuring a picture of a home or something like that, like that can work really well um, because it helps to qualify a bit. Um, because that particular, it's, it's not interesting to anyone who's not selling their home, right? Yeah. It's the most boring ad ever. And that's what makes it great because someone has to be motivated in order to actually reach out from that ad, right? Yeah. We're not a paperly provider. We're not trying to just like bring in like the most flashy I have to ad like that, think through that. I'm like, you're yeah. right. That is boring. Yeah. I'm not clicking on that ad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, and Facebook's algorithm works in a very interesting way where it sees who responds well to your ad and will show your ad to more and more people like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you have an ad that instantly qualifies, then you can find more and more of just those right kind of people in your market. Um, so that's one where like we, we almost want ads to have a really low CTR. That's a click through rate. Interesting. And, and we want a high conversion rate. Um, Cause I think those. a low CTR with higher cost per click, but mm-hmm. I guess it doesn't matter cause that's just part of the game. It's just part of the game because you can increase conversion rates because you can qualify better. So, so there's that, right? So yeah. that, that stuff works. There's also the video ad side where, you know, maybe having that person in their face can help have some better connection. We find that those tend to work really well as well. Um, we also get feedback from our clients consistently that when they talk to the person and they show up at their house, for example, the person's much more warm to them. Mm-hmm. And it has kind of that celebrity effect. If I saw you on Facebook in an advertisement, like you must be a big shot. So I, uh, you know, That's a good this point. time that you're giving me is really valuable. So we want to have that stuff, especially in retargeting, because it keeps your face in front of them over time, um, even if they're not ready to sell right now. Are you, are you, is your face on the ad? No, so that's the key thing is my team is on the ad. So it'd be my acquisition manager, the yeah. ones that will actually be going out. So I'm glad you brought that up because I'm like, mm-hmm. this is this is perfect. Because if it's me and I don't go out, they're like, who's this schmuck? Like, right. who's this guy? Well, because I'm, I'm just laughing because uh, Max, right? He goes out to the appointments or he'll call them and it's his, uh, the testimonies are, are his testimonials and my testimonials, right? Yeah. Like me interviewing sellers and him interviewing sellers. And he had a lead and she's like, hey, this is Max. She's like, like the Max, the Max in the ad. Like, <laughs> the, the, the Max, yeah. sign here. I want your autograph before I sign there. So yeah, uh, let me ask you. I think personality types though, think about this. Um, I had a guy that I sent, thir- I didn't know this until, I'm at a title company. This guy walks in, he's like, seventy eight thousand dollars check. It's a guy that went through a coaching program. And I'm like, and I'm looking at him like, oh, that's awesome. Really what I was doing is like getting the name. I'm like, what's the name and address? And I jot it down, right? <laughs> And I go back to the office and I'm like, we have to figure this out. Like, he just did a $78,000 deal. We got to figure this out. And I'm like, we mailed this guy like like six or seven times. He cold called him once and the guy's like, I keep getting postcards. And I'm like, no one's going to buy my house. This is the awful, it's the worst house out there. He's like, well, tell me about it. But it's because he called them. He gets a lead. So there's these personality types Mm -hmm. that respond to different things. That that still image versus like a video image. I think there's also that personality type that says, I'm going to go with the still image or I'm going to go with the video image. So I think there's that personality part. And this gets actually, I don't think you you quite understand the, the implications of what you said too, because Facebook uses that exact system, but in a much deeper level. Right. Mm-hmm. Facebook knows who's likely to respond to a video, who's That's likely right. to respond to an image, et cetera. So what we're doing, so, <laughs> Scary. so this is like, like imagine you have different postcards and you're mailing to people and you're dynamically delivering the postcard to each person based on things you know about them and what they're most likely to respond positively mm-hmm. to. And that's exactly how Facebook ads work. So yeah. with every client, we really stress having as, as many options in terms of breadth of creative as possible, mm-hmm. having that video and maybe also having that image of a house or something like that because it allows us to dynamically deliver whichever one is going to be most effective to each person. Um, have you experimented with Instagram? Yeah, we, we, when I say Facebook, I mean Instagram too. They're kind of one in the Do same. you get conversions from Instagram? We do. Um, what we care about is people. Mm-hmm. We don't care about where they are. Yeah. So we target the right people. And if that person's on Instagram, we're there. If that person's on Facebook, we're also there. They tend to be on Facebook more often than they're on Instagram. Right. But we're kind of agnostic to where they are. We just reach the person. So at the end of the day, we probably spend less than 10% of our budgets on Instagram, yeah. but we still spend money there when it works, you know? 
That's interesting. Uh, mm-hmm. Jacob Perkin wants to know, how does he go about getting the pen list? The pen list. So um, I'd, I'd be curious where he's at, if it's a disclosure state or non-disclosure state. Um, I would be talking to either title companies or talking to like a probate attorney or a divorce attorney because ultimately some states that allow you to just log in and get it, especially right now with it being closed down, some are already switching over. Now, some of these uh, slower cities, they're not. They're like, well, the courthouse isn't open, so you can't get it. And they have no, they have no ambition to change that. They're like, mm-hmm. when it opens again after COVID, you can come get it. Um, some cities are sophisticated enough where they're like, let's switch this to online so people don't come in. So it's readily accessible just through online searches through your government, through your county or township, your your courthouses. You can get them online. Or you talk to title companies or probate attorneys or divorce attorneys and ask them, say, how do you they know how to get leads, believe me. They're not just they're not just like, well, let's put it out on PPC. Mm-hmm. They're like, how do I get leads? They have lists that they get. Yeah. And title companies have access to lists, so ask them, hey, I'm looking for probate, eviction, notice of default, and divorce. Is there any list I can get from you? If you're doing deals with the, with the title company and they have access to that list, they're gonna be like, yes, I'm gonna give you that list all day long so you can keep bringing deals to me. Uh, probate attorney, they're a little bit, a little bit, yeah, they're a little like, like hold to it, like I can't share this much, or it maybe even might be against fiduciary responsibility. Mm-hmm. But ultimately what we did find out, there is a software out there that you can enroll in that gets you those lists that get them the same list. Right. So it's it's either gonna be software based, city based, county based, courthouse based, or unfortunately you're gonna have to literally drive there and get them. Right. But you can get them daily. Um, so Reginald David has a question, I think, because you, you saw this problem with Facebook and like not everyone can just plop a large chunk to start marketing. So he wants to know, if you have a small budget, how do you get started with digital marketing? Yeah, it's actually something that I'm pretty excited about right now um, because we, I mean, traditionally we've worked with, you know, larger wholesalers. We never really started working with people who were doing less than, say, 50 deals a month mm-hmm. uh, or something like that. But you have 50 uh, deals a year. I'd say a month. I don't even do that, man. Who are you working with? <laughs> Cody's our I want to meet client. this guy. <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, yeah, a year. But, but anyway, that's that's kind of arbitrary number. It depends on the market and everything right. like that. But like, yeah, traditionally we were dealing with like more, you know, bigger budgets and and uh, more full service type uh, type things. Um, we did just launch a product literally last week, so, so this is brand new um, for Facebook ads, where it's basically an entry level Facebook ad advertising type of product. Um, you go to a website, which I mean, I, I think you're going to have a link in the in the show notes here. I just posted it. Um, perfect. So, so that link, um, you can you can go there and then sign up for a strategy call, so we can figure out if it's actually a good fit for someone. Um, but it's a fifty dollar a day minimum program. So that means it's like I mean that works out to what like fifteen hundred bucks a month um, as a base for Facebook ads. And instead of trying to figure out what exact audiences are we going to target and how are we going to pull that data and what's our creative and and how are we going to optimize this? And, and how do we know like which form of capturing the leads is best and getting our website up and our hosting, like all these, this host of things, you literally, literally just go in and say, this is how much I want to spend each day. These are the counties I want to spend that money in and you get the leads. Right. And it's a, it's as simple as that. We set up the website on our end. Um, we set up the ads and the audiences. We have our own advertising that we tested uh, across a bunch of clients already that we're using for that. So it's kind of more of an entry level thing. Mm-hmm. It's not, I don't think it's right for every company because it's not custom to their brand, right? So they're not going to have like their face in those ads, for mm-hmm. example, and, and stuff like that. They're not going to integrate that with their PPC marketing and all that stuff. Like that's all stuff that I think comes. But do they tap into your knowledge? Like, I guess that'd be the question mm-hmm. I'd want to know. Do they tap into, you're now working with, let's say, X amount of wholesalers. Mm-hmm. I think that's what makes, in my mind, I'm like, man, that knowledge is getting wiser and wiser on your end saying, hey, amongst all of our clients, do they get a tap into that knowledge base that's saying, hey, we now have a, the, a big, massive lookalike audience that you're just tapping into already? Or no, does that not work like that? No, no it works exactly like that. So, so we're basically taking our knowledge of what's worked across yeah. clients. And this is just kind of taking the core of that and, and making it more, uh, like by making it not custom for every client and, and not you know, making a website for everything and customized and all that stuff. It basically just makes it more efficient on our end. So we can make that really simple. Entry. Yeah, you're, you're leveraging magnitudes of scale and exactly. using your what you know already. Mm-hmm. So I would say like if you're looking to, to potentially get into digital marketing, but you have a smaller budget, that's probably the best way to start. As soon as you 
do have the budget to afford it, I think a custom service could make a lot of sense mm -hmm. where you're going to be building something for your company specifically um, and taking into account those nuances of your market and all the different channels and the interactions and having your brand there and everything like that's definitely valuable. But this could be a good stepping stone. We intend for it to be a, a place where we can kind of start getting clients some deals yeah. um, and build up that trust in digital so that we can get them on the, you know, the full solution that's better, I think, in the long term. Um, but I do think it's a step up from, say, a paper lead type program because it is built for quality of leads. Um, it is built for uh, as much efficiency as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's kind of like in between a custom service and a paper lead type right. program. Um, a step, a stepping stone. Yeah, exactly. So you said you were spending how much uh, a year or per month on pay-per-click? Pay-per-click, you know that number probably better than I do. Nah, pay-per-click. I'd say, is it like seven? 15. To, is it fifteen? But that's between both markets. Between both markets. So that's Utah and Dallas. I'm like, it's not fifteen in each state. Um, Utah and Dallas, Texas, fifteen between the two. That gets you enough, huh? I'm kind of surprised. I thought you could go bigger in Dallas. I mean, everything's bigger in Texas. You, you can, can, but we have to scale <laughs> that team and make sure the process is in place. So gotcha. That's a one-year-old business where Got we're it. going on year. What are we since May of fifteen? So we're going on year six, almost six years. Mm -hmm. And this one's just in its infancy. So we're now building that out. So we just brought on our second acquisition manager. Mm -hmm. We're now building that out so that it can handle when we turn yeah. that up. Cause yes, there's, that's why I love Dallas. It's like what a nice city where I'm like, Oh man, I love this city. Cause it produces deals. You can like chuck a rock and you'll hit one of those cities in Dallas. It's like they're, they're everywhere. It doesn't they're matter everywhere. where you throw a rock. You're like, there's a deal. There's a deal. It's a massive, massive area. It's yeah. true. And he could spend, probably 50 grand a month on PPC in yeah. Dallas if you wanted to. So that was going to lead to my question, right? I, I, I mean, everyone in Phoenix just completely disregard this episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not for hire. <laughs> so how big can we get as far as spend goes in Phoenix for our operation? I mean, this is the, I mean, this is one of the key advantages of working with a company that really knows what they're doing, mm -hmm. right? Because when we work with you, we can figure out these kinds of things. Um, to know that before you enter into a market, and because like we're starting with you, Steve, mm -hmm. today, yeah, on your advertising, right? right? So, so like we don't have all this data to know. Like, yeah, Ryan doesn't know, but you're meeting with him right after this meeting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so we, uh, <laughs> so, so, anyways, that's where uh, like we need some of this information. Mm -hmm. But to give you an example of like what we're doing with Cody, oftentimes we're saying we have some more money. Where should we put that money? We're saying here's the data that we need on your side. Um, and then we'll look at things in PPC, like how often are you showing up and on what keywords are you showing up and how high are you showing up on those things? And we could do some simulations. If we were to spend more money, how would that affect your cost per lead? You can always spend more money, almost always. <laughs> the question is how much is that gonna increase the right. cost per lead and how far into diminishing returns are you gonna get? Um, if I had to guess in a market like Phoenix, over 30 grand a month, you could probably spend on PPC with uh, with a reasonable level of efficiency. Mm -hmm. But it is always that trade off between do we want to kind of be a small player and just pick off the lowest hanging fruit and have that advantage? Or do we want to play at volume and we're going to spend a lot more per lead, but we're going to get so many more leads and we're going to do a lot more deals? And yeah. could we be more profitable doing that? It's so, always about finding that balance between those two. And actually, that's a great point because this is a question I always was wondering about. Do I want to be, I always bid enough so that my average was 1.5, right? Sometimes I was one number one, number two, but I was never number three. Yeah. And so I just always adjusted my bids. Well, I didn't adjust it. I had it set so Google automatically adjusts my bids so that my average is 1.5. That ages you, Steve. Huh? <laughs> that ages you. It's, like, so it's not, not done that way. <laughs> but average position doesn't even exist as a metric, much less positional bidding. But yeah, anyways, <laughs> that's, that's just funny because that's before my time even. But Oh, geez. <laughs> <continue>. <laughs> So even he's so like I said, two dollars a click, yeah, yeah, twelve dollars yeah, a lead. Yeah. Anyway, crazy. Uh, what? So then there is no like magic now where you say like you know you want to be number one or number three. Like it's just like is there yeah. a, a goal here then as far as bidding? Yeah, ROI. Okay. Right. So so what that comes down to is sometimes there's going to be searches where you're like, oh, those aren't amazing. Mm -hmm. Someone's searching sell my house. Mm -hmm. Right, and it doesn't say that they're motivated, but also they're searching on Google, so maybe like that shows some type of motivation. Yeah, um, but it's not like a we buy ugly houses search. It's not a sell my house fast for cash or get a cash offer on my house yeah. uh, search. It could be um, traditional real estate. Yeah, it could be. It could be more more retail focused. Everything has a value. That's the key point. Like mm -hmm. in an extreme example, you you could be a wholesaler in Dallas, and then someone could be searching for a divorce lawyer in Memphis, Tennessee, and one in 
a million of those people searching for a divorce lawyer in Memphis, Tennessee also has a house in Dallas that they're wanting to sell. Mm -hmm. So that click has value to you. It could be like a millionth of a penny, but it has value, right? So, right. so that, I think that's, that's a key thing that we want to change in, in terms of our mindset about PBC mm -hmm. is it's not that there's good things and there's bad things. It's that there's things that are overvalued and undervalued. When you go into a market as a wholesaler, you're not looking for, I mean, you're wanting to you're wanting to sell houses at top dollar for as much as possible, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't go into the market and say, I'm now gonna look for the most expensive houses because that's how I sell, find the ones that are gonna sell for the most. Because that's not how you make the most money, right? That would be really silly. What you're looking for is houses that are undervalued. Mm -hmm. So you might find one where the house is only worth 20 grand, but you can lock it up for five grand. Well, that's a deal, right? right? Same thing with PPC. We have some stuff that's better, some stuff that's worse. The, the thing that's most valuable is understanding what those things are worth and bidding appropriately to it. So if you have a click that's worth $100, you don't pay $120 for it. Right. Right. Um, so that's that's the main thing is basically we look This is spread. that German talk I was talking about. Well, it's this like, is the reason why I signed up with them. <laughs> we were talking. <laughs> this is what I was there like, this is why I had to bring them. I sit there, I'm like, Steve's going to ask me a question. I'm gonna be like, I don't know. I have no idea. I better bring Brandon. But this is exactly why I signed up for this guy. So uh, Alexis was asking... You guys are pulling your list, you said daily. Yes. On right. on those four, yes. Tax delinquent, it's not worth pulling daily. And how often are you following up with a lead? So let's say someone hit the pen list yesterday. Yep. You pulled it today. Yep. What's the follow-up like after that? Yep. Um, that's going to depend on what it sounds like when it comes in, right? Mm -hmm. Like not every lead is going to get the same follow-up. Someone's Because we're reaching out to them on directly, it's called cold calling. Everything's cold. You're just reaching out to them. Some people are interested. Great. They're going to get follow-up. But we have a process. So our acquisition managers are the 30 days and less. Like someone that's going to move in 30 days or less, that's the only leads they touch. They don't touch our medium and they don't touch our cold. The medium's done by a di like a, a lead manager and then our cold is done by our cold callers. And so if it's like, oh yeah, I might sell next year, that stays in the biggest pool that has the most leads and mm -hmm. just gets followed up by our cold callers until they're ready and then it changes the pools or changes buckets. Yeah. But we only have 25 leads per acquisition manager at any given time that they're following, that's it. We want 90% of their effort on those 25 leads, not dinking around with these other leads that yes, are important, but not important for them to follow up on. So that's a hard question to answer because it's not all the same. It just depends on where they're at. 30 days or less, they're getting a phone call. It could be daily. It could be two, three, four times a week. Um, someone that's gonna move in the next six months, maybe a medium lead, it could be once a month. right? It could, and then it gets closer and then it switches over here and it's like now it's twice a week. Then it's once a, once a day. Um, just depending on time frame. Uh, Tyler's asking, do you pull from the county daily or is there a software? And I think that just really depends on the market. Depends on the market. So that's gonna be completely reliant upon where you live and that's gonna be unique. But if you find out that you have a probate attorney that says, hey, here's this or here's that, you're gonna find out that you're probably one of the only people in your market that had the courage to go find that list mm. daily. And if you get it, it's a gold mine. Thank me later. It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome list. Uh, Prince wants to know, Brandon, if he wanted to learn SEO, where should he start? Ooh, learning SEO. That's a that's an interesting one. I don't get asked that very much because most business owners they're like, I don't want to spend my time doing that. Like, mm -hmm. if you learn enough about SEO, you realize it's not worth your time mm -hmm. because <laughs> it's, it's a twelve month payoff. I'm not going to go work on something that doesn't pay me for twelve months. Well, and, and SEO is a labor game. Mm -hmm. It's really like like as an agency providing SEO, our game is how cheaply can we write content mm -hmm. and if you if you learn like if you learn like what you get with an agency and you calculate it in your mind like how long it would take you to do those things <laughs> you'd be like this there's no way it's worth my time as a business owner to, to do seo mm -hmm. um but but, anyways, but if they wanted to but if they wanted to um i think uh, a good resource is backlinko mm -hmm. it's a it's a blog that ranks really well on google kind of uh, so i should start reading search, search engine journals what you're saying yeah, search engine journal, backlink. I mean, you can search. and take away your time from talking to motivated sellers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Good heuristic is search on Google SEO and see who shows up first, and that'll yeah. tell you something. So, um, but yeah, anyways, it's uh, there's definitely a lot that you can learn about it. I can touch on the very simple things real quick. Mm -hmm. um, you want to produce content, and you want to be posting that content targeted to particular keywords. So you need your keyword strategy. You need to produce content, and then you need a backlinking strategy, a strategy for getting links to your website. Um, beyond that, it's just about optimizing your website for particular things, but that's that's most of what comes into an SEO service. So you can do that, right? Like mm -hmm. if you're just the guy who's gonna run 100 miles an hour in, in whatever direction, 
um, that is, like start producing content and posting on your website. Start getting links from other websites to yours. Yeah. Um, get your Google listing set up, get Google reviews. If you do those things, like you will rank. It's just a matter of like, you could be more aggressive with SEO and get yeah. it done faster or you could be slower. So Prince, one thing I'll add, because I used to do all my own SEO, is don't. <laughs> 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 because the algorithms change. Yeah. So even what worked last year, you thought we were still doing a 1.5. Yeah, right. Stuff that used to work no longer works. And so for me, I did all my own SEO and it's like that, that was not a good, like <laughs> all those hours, poof, gone. Right. Um, and then property grabs saying the pre foreclosure list, eviction list, um, with all these moratoriums, how are you guys adjusting? So are there moratoriums right now going on Salt Lake? Um, so there was that eviction moratorium where it's like you can't an eviction evict moratorium, but was there a foreclosure moratorium? Um, yes, but I don't, I don't know if that's going to be as big a problem as people think it is. Because at the end of the day, there's the the market hasn't dropped. So even if they're like, hey, we're not kicking out a house, a lot of those people still have plenty of time to sell their home, mm -hmm. and as long as they have equity majority are just going to sell their home on a traditional market right. where I think in 08, it was a different, there was a full on <laughs> crash a lot of and it's pressure. like people are now negative right now, just cause you're in foreclosure doesn't mean you're negative or upside down. So I, everyone's hooting and hollering about this foreclosure thing. And I'm like, I, I don't know what there's thing, why people are hooting and hollering about it. There's so much equity in these homes that majority are never going to come to us. No, I, I know that's my two cents. No, I, I actually agree with you 100%. Um, what is a great budget? I'm assuming here this is about digital marketing. If you want to scale to 100 deals a year. We did about 150. So I, all I can talk about is comparison. We did 150 deals between Utah and Dallas and our budget. I hope you know those numbers. You spent 275 grand across those two, but that was for digital. Yeah. I don't know what you're spending on your other stuff. Yeah, uh, but that was just digital he's asking, right? I'm presuming. So 275,000 did 150 deals in two different markets. That's, but 150 deals was total, right? Not just digital. Oh, that's so, a good point. That's yeah. a good yeah, point. So anyways, it, it, it's but 40%, 40% of, of your deals, right? That's right. So 80. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the, the thing about that is too, like market's going to be different. Like mm. we, we provide some numbers like that. Someone in Indiana is going to be like, oh, this is a horrible idea. <laughs> right. And somebody in California and San Francisco is going to say, well, that's amazing. <laughs> you know, because they, they just have different assignments. And that's right. Naturally, areas with lower assignments are also cheaper to get deals in. Right. Um, so so those things kind of adjust. Um, I can tell you a lot of our clients starting out are spending around eighty five hundred dollars a month for all three channels. If you're doing one channel, you can bump that to, say, four grand a month. Um, or there's like with Facebook with the you know the, the base level program as low as fifty dollars a month. So that gives you fifty dollars a day. Or fifty dollars a day, yeah, not a month. So yeah, Saeed's so follow up was he was talking about all lead gen. So yeah. how much would you need to spend to do hundred deals a year? So a hundred deals a year, all lead gen. Um, for our hundred and fifty, I can just go off that. We're about uh let's call it uh forty to we vary between forty and fifty K a month. In marketing. But yep. tell them your average assignment though. Yeah, average message. assignment. Well, it depends on what channel, but overall, like digital marketing, it's a $32,000 assignment. Guys, when I got into the game in 2015, my average is right, 13,500, like 14,000. Really? So all we've done is just get better at our process wow. and better at our process and got dialed in on getting good at acquisitions, but getting really good at dispositions. And between that, now our average assignment's anywhere from 28,000 to 30,000 every deal. So you times it by 150 deals and you just start to get it going. Yeah, right. it works. It it's works. Awesome. Uh, Warner wants to know, uh, what is your preferred PPC bidding strategy? Uh, we, this, this will mean nothing to most people. Mm -hmm. um, German. <laughs> enhanced CPC. <laughs> Um, because we, we do want to do some dynamic, um, some dynamic changes to mm. the bids based on different signals. Um, but we also recognize that Google's never going to have quite enough data in one account for real estate investing to actually be able to bid automated. Mm -hmm. um, so our database is so much more powerful than, than any type of automated strategy, but we do allow Google to make slight adjustments to our bids based on different conversion signals. Also, let me make sure I don't screw anyone up on this. I have to correct some things. Of those 150 deals, 20, about seven, 28 of them are fix and flips. Not a lot of people know I do fix and flips. Mm -hmm. I do them, so that also helps that assignment. So I also wanna help people understand like, I'm a truth teller, truth seeker. I'm not gonna be here and say, oh, these are straight assignments, they're not. And a lot of wholesale deals, guys, I think tis the season, tis the market, to be really considering buying that home 
and um, putting it right back on the market. And you'll see that it's it's crazy. We got a deal for 250,000. ARV was 350. So instead of getting like a $15,000 assignment, we're like, let's just put on the MLS for 299. This home still needed about 20 grand work, but it was livable and it was lendable. That's the key thing. We put it on the market and it got bid up to 350. And then the guy's like, I'll pay the difference, whatever it doesn't appraise for, I'll pay the difference because I want my daughter to live by. And we're like, this is absurd. Yeah, so we it's... made a hundred grand, well, we didn't make a hundred grand, but there was a hundred thousand dollar spread yeah. on a home that was probably 299. Yeah, it's, it's nuts right now. Yeah. So I want you guys to think about some last thoughts you wanna leave the listeners with. Okay. Uh, guys, if you got value today, please, like this subscribe share comment let people know right like if we're all getting better together it's i think it's better for the industry if we're all getting better together uh and then next week we got brian erect he's gonna be talking about how he did six figures a week uh during covid which i think is pretty crazy uh using creative finance that's huge so uh i'll start with you okay last thoughts and how can someone get hold of you last thoughts um I think it goes back to, because I think a lot of times our, our listeners, I mean, we have some seasoned people out there, but I think a majority of people that watch content are like, they want to get in the game. They really haven't done something yet. You don't have to be good. You just have to be consistent. I can't say that enough. That's probably one of my favorite sayings because too many people don't get in the game because they're waiting to be perfected. They're waiting for this perfect plan. But the individuals that just get out there and take massive imperfect, not perfect, massive imperfect action will always outperform the individuals that are sitting at home, building a perfect plan, taking no action at all. All right. And how can someone get a hold of you? Um, you can go to goref.com. That's a new website up to learn more about me, but also just my handles just at uh, Facebook and Instagram, and that's just Cody Hoffine. And it's ref with two Fs. Yeah, ref. Go ref. Yeah. Stands for Real Estate Freedom Formula. Mm-hmm. Brandon. Yeah, I mean, I would just say a lot of stuff is kind of tightening up and digital marketing is only getting bigger, mm-hmm. right? So so I would encourage anybody who doesn't have this as a piece of their strategy to just recognize that like the internet's not gonna go away and people are gonna find <laughs> the companies they do business with on the internet. So it's yeah. like, it, it almost sounds silly saying it, but there's so many wholesalers that are just so only male. Only yeah. cold calling, and this is a big chunk of business that exists out there. So, so yeah, that's my that's my uh, my my recommendation. Um, I have a, a link that I think you shared where mm-hmm. you can book a strategy session with me, where we'll basically talk about your specific market, what we know about it, get some idea of the the data there, and if you've done advertising before and it hasn't worked for you for whatever reason, whether it's pay per click, whether it's Facebook ads, um, whether it's SEO stuff, like I will look at that. And, and try to figure out what went wrong. I've done that with you, Steve. Right. Where we just looked through your stuff and said, like, this is why it is the way it is. Mm-hmm. And also, don't make the same mistakes over and over again because a lot of people will be like, oh, it didn't work, and then just try the same thing again because mm-hmm. they don't understand why it didn't work. Right. right. So, so if if I can provide that kind of clarity to, to anyone, I'm more than happy to do it because I know it's tough to uh, it's tough to have something that didn't work and not know if it's you, if it's your marketing, if it's your market that's not going to work. And you never know anything for certain, but mm-hmm. because we work with over 30 wholesalers all across the United States, we have a really great idea of what exactly it takes to right. scale your website to more than a million, a million dollars a year in terms of assignments. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd encourage anyone to, to go to that link. It's I think it's www.batemancollective.com slash disruptors. Mm-hmm. And there you can uh, yeah schedule the strategy session and let's just dig into it. Awesome. awesome. And if someone wanted to reach out to you directly, is there another way? Um, yeah, there's uh, Brandon Bateman on, on Facebook. Um, there's got to be more than one of those. <laughs> yeah, there, there probably are. There's 72 of these guys. And where, honestly, where for, someone, for someone who advertises a lot on Facebook, I hate it so much I hardly ever use it. Uh, but there I am. Um, there's also just by, by email. My email is brandon at batemancollective.com. And that's B A T E. M A N is Bateman. How you spell yep. it? Awesome. Oh, and guys, don't forget, I do have the book, Active Listening 2.0, and Amazon. Check it out. Thank you. Steve Blast. Trang, Steve, my man. So much. Dude, I appreciate you. This stuff's killer. Yeah, that was fun. Fun. It's a great episode. See you guys later.